Shabbat Shalom. It is the Shabbat. It is like 5.15 in the morning or something like that. And so grateful. I was forced to work last night, third shift, and all of a sudden, at like 4.30 in the morning, they let everybody go home right before the sun was coming up. And right away, my spirit just got super, super happy and just joyful. Go down to the water, to the water. And, um, but yeah, in prayer all night, you know, Please pray, everyone. You know, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, he was the Word made flesh, and he, he, as we know, as a, as a child, as a boy, was in, this, in, in the synagogue, right? Teaching and conversing and building with the Torah teachers and the, and, and, and the, and the leaders of the synagogues, you know? And they were astounded at his, at his wisdom at a young age. So much so he stayed there building with them when his mama and his daddy and the rest of his family went back home. He was still right there building in the scriptures. And um, but yet when it came time for ministry, when he when he was walking the earth doing the ministry, he he had the word in him. You know, if you have one of those scriptures that, you know, shows whenever the Old Testament or the Torah is uh, quoted. You know, that's all he really said. He spoke in parables and quoted the Torah. That's what Yeshua did. He spoke in parables and quoted the Torah. That's what he did, you know, for the most part. And it's like, outside of that, though, he was somewhere praying. Thousands of the people here break off, go pray. With his disciples, break off, go pray. Pray. Prayer. Prayer could pray. Prayer lines up the word because you are in the presence and the presence is what is needed the presence is what makes the word come alive within so let's get to the word here and uh, we're going to continue we're going to continue in uh, Philippians <sighs> Philippians chapter 3 Philippians chapter 3 In conclusion my dear brothers Rejoice in union With the Lord It is no trouble for me To repeat what I have written you before It's no trouble for me to repeat it To say it again Hallelujah <laughs> Right It is no trouble for me to repeat it Rejoice in union with the Messiah. It is no trouble for me to repeat what I have written you before. And right, this is what they did. This is what the Messiah did. This is what Yah did in, 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 the, in, the, in the Old Covenant, right? In, in the Old Testament, the Torah and the Tanakh, they would say something and said like four or five times. It is no trouble for me to repeat what I have written you before. And for you, it will be a safeguard. This is why it is said over and over again. Because the fact of the matter is the adversary, the devil, Say the stuff in your mind over and over and over again. So this is why in the words things are repeated over and over and over again. It is no trouble for me to repeat what I have written to you before. And for you it will be a safeguard. Here we go. Beware of the dogs. Those evildoers. The mutilated. For it is we who are the circumcised. For it is we who are the circumcised, we who worship by the spirit of Elohim and make our boast in the Messiah, Yeshua. We do not put confidence in human qualifications, right? Even though I, here we go, I love this stuff. Even though I certainly have grounds for putting confidence in such things. If anyone else thinks he has grounds for putting confidence in human qualifications, I have better grounds, says Paul, right? Why? Because... He was circumcised on the eighth day by birth belonging to the people of Israel from the tribe of Benjamin, from, from the tribe of Ben Amin, a Hebrew speaker with Hebrew speaking parents. In regard to the Torah, he was a Pharisee. In regard to zeal, a persecutor of the Messianic community. In regard to righteousness demanded by legalism, blameless. The man that never break the law. But these things, 
that used to be an advantage for me, I have because of the Messiah come to consider them a disadvantage. Not only that, but I consider everything a disadvantage in comparison to the supreme value of knowing the Messiah, Yeshua, as my Lord. It was because of him that I gave up everything and regarded all this garbage. Whew. Have you given up everything? Have you given up everything and regarded all those things as garbage? Huh? Give it up. Let it go. Have you given up everything and regarded it as garbage? I have given up everything, Paul says, and regarded it as garbage. For what purpose? Hallelujah. We're in Philippians. Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. For what purpose? To gain the Messiah. He gave up everything and regarded it all as garbage to gain the Messiah. And be found in union with him, not having any righteousness, not having any righteousness of my own based on legalism, but having that righteousness which comes through the Messiah's faithfulness, the righteousness from Elohim based on trust. The righteousness from God, the righteousness from Elohim, the righteousness from Yahweh is based on trust. Trust in what Yah said, not what the adversary tells you. Not in what you think yourself. Trust in what he says. And what he says be right here. And what is received by the true Ruhak in prayer, which is confirmed right here. Hallelujah. Yes, I gave up it all in order to know him. That is to know the... Hallelujah. That is to know the power of his resurrection. That is to know the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings. We're going to have to suffer a little bit, y'all. As I am being conformed to his death, you're going to have to die. So that somehow I might arrive at being resurrected from the dead. Ah, oh, that's a beautiful thing. I'm going through it right now myself. Praise y'all. Being resurrected from the dead. But first I have to die. Hallelujah. Please die to be resurrected again. That is Yeshua alive in you, dying, then being resurrected again. Die to yourself. It is not that I have already, it is not that I have already obtained it or already reached the goal. No, even Paul said right there, it ain't like he already reached the goal. You know what I'm saying? Anybody after talking about they reached the goal, I am this and I am, they, they, they tripping. Even Paul himself, himself said, I haven't reached the goal. It's not I. It is not that I have already obtained it or already reached the goal. No, I in, I keep pursuing it in the hope of taking hold of that which the Messiah, Yeshua, took hold of me. Brothers, I, for my part, do not think of myself as, as having yet gotten hold of it. But one thing I do, like Paul himself said, he, for his part, don't even think that he got a hold of it. I know I have not gotten a hold of it. Anybody out there, if you think you have gotten a hold of it, you think you have reached some place, you haven't. Okay, but keep pursuing, keep pursuing. Brothers, I for my part do not think of myself as having yet gotten a hold of it. But one thing I do, what, what does Paul do? Forgetting what is behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. Forget what's behind. Mm -hmm. Forget it. If it happened 10 years ago, if it happened five years ago, if it happened five minutes ago, Forget what is behind and keep moving forward. Hallelujah. I keep pursuing the goal in order to win the prize offered by Elohim's upward calling in the Messiah Yeshua. Therefore, as many of us are mature, let us keep paying attention to this. And if you are differently minded about anything, Yahweh will also reveal this to you. Only let your conduct fit the level which you have already reached. If there's anything else you need, Elohim gonna keep adding to you. All you must do is let your confidence and your conduct reach the level that you already at. So where you know you're supposed to be and how you know you're supposed to conduct yourself and what you know you're supposed to be on, do that. And get elevated some more after you perfect where you at. Hallelujah. And brothers, join in imitating me and pay attention to those who live according to the pattern we have set for you. For many, I have told you for many, I have told you about them often before, and even now, as I said with tears, live as enemies. Whew. Live as enemies of the Messiah's execution state. They are headed for destruction. They're God of their belly. They are proud of what they ought to be ashamed of, since they are concerned about things of this world. Whew. 
but we are citizens of heaven and it is from there that we expect a deliverer the lord yeshua the messiah he will change the bodies we have in this humble state and make them like his glorious body he will change our bodies that we have in this humble state and make them like his glorious body he will change your body and make it like his in his glorious state hallelujah he will change the bodies we have in this humble state and make them like his body his glorious body using the power which enables him to bring everything under his control verse 1 chapter 4 philippians so my brothers whom i love and whom i long for hallelujah my joy here we go to my brothers those who have ears here to my brothers whom i love and whom i long for my joy and my crown my joy and my crown my dear friends keep standing firm in union with the messiah keep standing firm in union with the messiah verse 4 chapter 4 rejoice in union with Yahweh always I will say it again rejoice let everyone see how reasonable and gentle you are the Lord is near don't worry about anything on the contrary make your request known to Elohim by prayer by prayer make your request known to Elohim by prayer hallelujah make your request known to Elohim by prayer and petition with thanksgiving be thankful man when y'all makes a move when y'all does something if y'all doing something be thankful do not disregard the greatness and 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 the move that y'all is making to be thinking about the things of this world be thankful hallelujah the Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. On the contrary, make your request known unto Elohim by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Then Elohim Shalom passing. Elohim Shalom passing our understanding will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with the Messiah. In conclusion, brothers, focus your thoughts on. This is what we must focus our thoughts on. In conclusion, my brothers, focus your thoughts on what is true. Focus on what is true, not the lies Satan say. Focus on what is true, not the stuff you believe, right? Focus on the stuff that is true. Because the scripture says what? Above all, our heart is deceitful. That's why we got to stay pumping the word inside ourselves. Focus on things that are true, noble, righteous, pure, lovable, admirable, on some virtue or something praiseworthy. Keep, this is the things you're supposed to focus on. These are the things we ought to focus on. Keep doing what you have learned and received from me, what you have heard and seen me doing. <laughs> right? Hallelujah. Then the Elohim who gives Shalom will be with you. Then the Elohim, then Elohim who gives Shalom will be with you. His Shalom will be with you. Verse 10, chapter 4, Philippians. In union with <laughs> in union with the Lord, I greatly rejoice that now, after this long time, you have let your concern for me express itself again. Of course, you were concerned for me all along. Mm -hmm. you, you were concerned for me all along But have no opportunity to express it Now that I am saying this To call attention to any Not to call need Not to call to attention any need of my Those who have ears here Let's say this slowly In union with the Lord I greatly rejoice that now After this long time You have let your concern for me Express itself again Of course you were concern for me all along but you had no opportunity to express it not that I am saying this to call attention to any need of mine since as far as I'm concerned I have learned to be content regardless of the circumstances I know what it is to be in want I know what it is to be in want And I know what it is to have more than enough. In everything, in every way, I have learned the secret of being full and being hungry and having abundance and being in need. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> Nevertheless, it was good for you to share in my trouble. And you Philippians yourself know that in the early days of my work of spreading the good news, when I left Macedonia, not a single congregation shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, only you. Nobody shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, only you. Indeed, in Thessalonica, 
when I needed it, she sent it to me in Thessalonica. In Thessalonica, when I needed it, you sent aid to me twice. Thank you, Father. I am not seeking the gift. Rather, I am looking for what will increase the credit balance of your account. I'm not seeking no gift. I'm just looking to increase your account. I have been more than paid in full. Hallelujah. I have been more than paid in full. I have been filled. Since I have received from Ephroditus the gifts you sent, they are a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, one that pleases Elohim as well. Moreover, my God will fill every need of yours according to his glorious wealth in union with the Messiah, Yeshua, and to Elohim, our Father, be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet each of Elohim's people in the Messiah, Yeshua, the brothers with me, send their greetings to you. The brothers with me, send their greetings to you. And all Elohim's people, send greetings. But especially those in the emperor's household, the grace of the Lord, Yeshua, the Messiah, be with you in the spirit. May the grace be with you in the Ruha. Shalom. Shabbat. Shalom.